Yo, 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 what up PVR Life fans? It's your boy Brandon back with another video. So right now I'm about to do a rundown on my top five albums for 2016. When I first started listening to music, I was really into hip hop. So that's what I grew up on, hip hop or rap or whatever you want to call it, r and I don't know if you guys like R&B music, you gotta have some R&B music for the ladies, right? But over time, as I got older, my tastes started to change and I became more accepting of other genres of music. Any kind of music that makes people happy basically if it puts people in a good mood I'm down for it you know because I already know what makes me happy if I'm around a lot of people and it makes them happy then I like it too <laughs> message but that's not what this video is about today this video today right now is about my top five albums for 2016 all right let's get into these albums my top five albums in no particular order album number one Stoney Post Malone so this is his debut album right here to me I thought this album was fire this is the deluxe version so it's a little bit long there's 18 tracks on it I think this dude he did a really good job of getting on the new wave you know and making music that he wants to make it. my favorite track on here is congratulations so that's a really dope song no option was dope big lie was dope that's track number two yours truly austin post was fire so some of the other tracks that have been out for a while like white iverson too young and go flex he put those on here those songs were really good there was that other song with two chains money made me do it that was on his mixtape i don't think those songs take away anything from this album you know they were good songs even though they're older tracks you know so i'm actually happy that he put White Iverson on here because that was such a big song for him. That's probably still his biggest song to date. Why would you not include that fire track on your debut album? That's one of those songs that if he doesn't make another classic track, that will be the one that, you know, will be on everybody's playlist 10 years down the road and you can put White Iverson on and it'll still be flames. Number two, Red Hot Chili Peppers, The Getaway. This was their first album in a while. This one right here, The Getaway. Fire. I'm a Chili Peppers fan from back in the day. I'm probably gonna go up to the Bay Area in March to go check them out. Looking forward to that. Best songs to me off of here were track number one was good, The Getaway. It starts off with an up-tempo track, very fire. Number two was Dark Necessities. That was their leading single that I feel like was fire. Music video was even better. Sick Love was good. I like that track. The Longest Wave, Goodbye Angels. So overall, I like the whole album. Out of all the albums that I listened to this year in 2016, I probably played this one the most. That was just the mind state that I was in. Shout out to Red Hot Chili Peppers. Number three, J. Cole for Your Eyes Only. This album right here, a little bit shorter. There's only 10 tracks, no features. With the artist like J. Cole, you know, he spits the truth. If you're not looking for the truth and you just want to party and rah-rah and turn up and get lit, don't buy this right here. This is one of those albums that gets you to think a little bit. He's trying to drop some knowledge, dropping some messages. For today's generation, that's what these kids need sometimes. You know, sometimes you need to hear the truth because life is not one big turn up, not all the time. If I had to pick my favorite tracks off of this album, so I've been listening to it a lot while I'm playing NBA 2K17, and the tracks that stood out to me the most was track number two, Immortal, Change, and the last track, For Your Eyes Only. That track was a little bit longer, but he really dropped a lot of good knowledge and wisdom on that track so overall short album but good album number four usher hard to love <laughs> i like r&b music you know you gotta like music that the ladies like if you guys don't know how to get girls or you don't know how to talk to women listen to r&b these r&b artists like usher chris brown trey songs they make songs for the ladies and if you're a guy and you hate on that you probably don't have a lot of women don't be afraid to learn from the masters so anyways this was his first album in a while the hardest part about being an artist or a musician is constantly reinventing yourself to appeal to the younger generation. I think he did a good job with that track No Limit featuring Young Thug. You know, the video was super dope too, getting all those young kids and having them dance in the video. That was a very dope music video. Uh, so the tracks that I like off of this album in no particular order are No Limit, that song Crash, it was good. Rivals featuring Future, that song was fire. And FWM, that's an acronym for something that you'll have to find out when you listen to this album. This album, pretty good. It'll be in rotation in the future. And the last album, The Game. 
1992. So this album, to me, you know, I'm biased. I'm a big game fan. You know, he was calling it a mixtape in the beginning, but then I think it sold better than what he thought, and so it became an album. If I had to nitpick and say one thing negative about it, I would say he recycled too many old beats that we've already heard before without changing them up, really. But I guess one can argue that he's trying to fit the theme of 1992 or the 90s around that time when those songs of those beats were really big. It's not like he got on them and made them worse. You know, it's just something that we've heard before. I think overall, the game, he always comes correct. I like his style. He stays true to who he is and he speaks the truth. So this was a dope album. I like the cover art on it. He used the same artist that did Snoop Dogg's Doggy Style album. If you guys ever get a chance, look at Snoop Doggy Dog Doggy Style. That album cover changed my life and a lot of kids at that time. My favorite songs on this album were track number eight, I grew up on Wu-Tang, super dope beat, and I like how he incorporated a lot of Wu-Tang lyrics in there. Track number 12, 92 bars, fire. That was just a basic hard hitting beat and he just goes hard on it and he goes hard at Meek Mill and a lot of haters. So that was the joint right there, 92 bars. It kind of reminds me of Puff Daddy's All About the Benjamins beat. You can just put it on, put on the instrumental and just kind of like zone out and just rap on it, you know, freestyles. Track number one, Savage Lifestyle. That was a dope track too, that one he kind of brings to life the 1992 riots back then with Rodney King and all that. There was a big riots of Los Angeles in 1992 and he did a really good job of bringing to life what happened at that time period. That set the mood for this album. This one has replay value in my opinion so I'll definitely be listening to this one again in the future. All right PBR Life fans so that's what it is. Those are my top five albums. Leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know what your top five albums of 2016 were and why. All right this is your boy Brandon PBR Life signing off. I'll catch you guys soon. Peace.